With the latest generation of MS drugs, we're seeing a substantial increase in myelination. This breakthrough in acceleration allows us to add other sequences to our standard protocol. Getting to know the Philips Ingenia Elysian has been tremendous. It opens up whole new worlds of possibilities. We're a very busy site. We have many, many studies, and there's close to 70 principal investigators who develop their careers at our site. We also have many clinical trials running in parallel. Some of them have been around for two years. The longest is 15 years. Our group's best known for a technique called myelin water imaging. This measures the myelin content in brain, and it does it in living people. And this is because the water in myelin has a different T2 relaxation time than the rest of the water in brain. Several of our clinical trials follow the development of myelin water content in normal appearing white matter in MS patients. With the latest generation of MS drugs, we're seeing a substantial increase in myelination. This shows that the treatment is really working in the cohorts we're studying, and that's very exciting news for us. So my main line of work is translating quantitative and biologically specific MRI methods into clinical use. Since I work a lot on multiple sclerosis, I've been really passionate about the impact of myelin imaging. So myelin water imaging has greatly benefited from the Felix Ingenia elision. Instead of using compressed sense to accelerate, in this case we're using it to advance the sequences from just acquiring brain images, even without the cerebellum, to spending about the same amount of time, but getting the whole brain and the cervical spinal cord. So I focus on quantitative MRI of the brain, and my group and I are mainly interested in the mapping of magnetic susceptibility and myelin content of tissue. Uh, the elision helps us mainly with compressed sense, which allows us to acquire images much faster, and they're still very sharp. And this breakthrough in acceleration allows us to uh, add other sequences to our standard protocol. So we're still using traditional images like flare for lesion identification, but now there's a real push towards newer methods like high-resolution 3D T1 weighted images for volumetrics and susceptibility weighted imaging. So there's also more emphasis on spinal cord because we have much better acquisition and analysis tools now. So the new gradients and compressed sense on the elision allows us to acquire quantitative susceptibility maps and susceptibility weighted imaging in just one and a half minutes. And for 3D flare, we also use uh, compressed sense heavily and it allows us to push the spatial resolution to, to very high levels. And I have the feeling that uh, radiologists will more likely adopt these 3D scans because they look beautiful in all three planes. The same goes also for 3D T2 weighted scans and 3D T1 weighted scans. Another thing that we're doing more now is diffusion tensor imaging. We can make DTI scans much faster, and now it's much easier for us to add these scans to the standard imaging protocol. So having access to such a wide variety of imaging parameters and the high quality images means that we're getting better at detecting lesions and monitoring and diagnosing in MS. Getting to know the Philips Ingenia elision has been tremendous. It opens up whole new worlds of possibilities. 